Hi everyone. Um, right, so today it's a gorgeous morning here in the northeast of England. Um, quite mild, nice and sunny. Um, so I thought you might like to have a look in the greenhouse and just see how all the little seedlings that are sowed in October are doing. bird song isn't it so you'll see I've um, I've brought out some of the pots of bulbs that I planted I've brought those out from inside the greenhouse and um, so that's mascari narcissus wave I've got some over there um, narcissus minnow right we'll go inside here and I'll give you an update so I really am getting squished for space in here but I don't care I love it right so for anybody that's new to my channel all of these seedlings in this greenhouse um, are white flowers because I'm creating a white garden um, out the back of my house so um, I'll just take you through I've got Ami Magus I have what's this the Bascom Snowy Spires. I've got two different types of Antirrhinum. I've got white foxgloves and white lupins. And I think that's that's about it. So when we built the greenhouse last November, I had this very handy shelf put up. Um, going all the way around because I knew this would happen. I always plant, I was going to say I always plant far too many seeds, but I will need all these many seeds. I just run out of space at this time of year. Um, I sowed all the seeds for these plants on the same day back in October. I think it was mid-October. Um, and then I was, they were brought into the greenhouse. Um, I kept them in my conservatory for a while and then I brought them into the greenhouse um, off to overwinter in here. Um, and you can see there are varying sizes. I'll show you the ones in the cold frame in a minute. So these are by far the biggest ones in the greenhouse. These are Ami Majors, but then these are Ami Majors as well as are these little ones here. And the reason for the difference in size is that in January in the UK, we had um, a horrific storm and it blew the um, panes of glass out the greenhouse and sort of devastated it. So a lot of these little plants were tipped out of their module trays because all of the seedlings were planted in, once I pricked them out, I pricked them out into these little module trays and they were tipped over on the floor. Um, so I sort of resuscitated them. Um, and this is the difference I have. But I'm not bothered because it just means I'll have, um, instead of them all growing at the same size and all dying at the same time, um, I'll have a sort of succession of Ami Majors plants. Uh, it was the Ami Majors that were... Uh, tipped out onto the floor. So I've potted them on from, and there's a video out on it, I've potted them on from these little modules into much bigger pots and you can see the roots starting to develop in, in there. And even the teeny weeny ones, they're still nice and healthy. Every day in the greenhouse, I come in, I open the door, regardless of how cold it is, um, and I open the window, and um, it gets, it gives the plants in this greenhouse some ventilation and also um, some root rock. If there isn't any wind, I tend to just drag my hand over the top very gently once a day, and that helps the plants to strengthen their roots. And then up on the shelf here, I have more Ami Majors. Now you can see the roots in there. 
they're not hanging out the bottom yet so i'm not worried and they are kept on the dry side actually this is a, a good example of how um what i do when i'm running out of space so you can see in these little modules i have two plants in each module so today definitely i'm going to um take all of these out and i'll pop them up individually into nine centimeter pots like that so all these ones have been done so these are definitely the ones that had the worst damage in the storm you can see how tiny they are but we'll give them a chance um Amy may just I'll, I'll put a picture up if I can um they're a very tall plant they can grow five to six foot tall in my garden they grow pencil thin straight up and they get a sort of flat white lacy flower on the top As for the um, Antirrhinum White Admiral and Apple Blossom, the Apple Blossom seedlings did much, much better than the White Admiral. I must have had it nigh on a 100% success rate in germination, um, whereas the White Admiral, um, probably a quarter of the seedlings that I planted germinated. I don't know why that should be um, but anyway you can see if I you can see the sort of height of these apple blossom antirrhinum um, some of them I've taken out of these tiny little modules and I've I've planted them up into bigger modules I did that last week so they've all got much more root soil to grow into um so these these ones here were probably the same size as those ones there and that's what they're like once they're potted on and then i have white fox gloves and this is quite interesting as well, because some of the white foxgloves are this size, but some of them, the trays are full like this. Now, then the roots aren't coming out the bottom yet, so I'm not too worried about them. And also the leaves are a nice, healthy green color. If your little seedlings start going a bit yellow, the leaves go a bit yellow, it means they've run out of nutrition in the soil. But definitely, um, these need potting on into nine centimeter pots as well. There's another tray of them. You see the difference? So those to say that one there. And then for anybody who's been watching me, you know I can't throw plants away. So even the stragglers um, that were left in the seed trays i had to give them a chance so i've potted them on into little modules so these were actually the seed was sprinkled at the same time that this seed was sprinkled and yet that's what they look like and i've got modules of them down here are they ever going to catch up or am I just being unrealistic because a lot of people just saw their foxglove seeds at this time of year. We're right at the end of February now. I think it's February 28th. Um, and as I say, I sowed all these in October last year. So this is the difference. If you want a head start um, in the gardening year, you can't sow all seeds in the autumn but you can sow an awful lot what i haven't got here which i normally have is i usually start wallflower seeds up as well um just as well i didn't because i haven't got room for them right um have you got anything oh yes the lupins so uh the lupins were also started off in little modules then i upgraded them to this size module um, and then just last week, so I'll take this over here, 
just last week I pricked these ones out and put them in nine centimeter pots and look at the difference there I mean I know he's quite big but I would say they were all about this size it's funny you put them in a bigger pot and they instantly look bigger anyway so so yeah they're great so just one more thing I want to show you before I show you in the cold frames um, are these Ami Magus. Now I grew a whole tray of Ami Magus in these little bags because um, it was a lovely present of my daughter because she knew I was running out of pots. Actually, I'm going to take these out of here because they've had a good drink and I don't want them sitting in water for too long. So yes, I grew them all in these little bags here and I'm going to show you. I haven't had great success with these bags in the past. So you can see the root. Can you see that? The roots growing out the bottom, but they really struggle to grow out the side of the pot. I mean, they are starting to try and get through there. Anyway, when I wanted to pot these up last week into nine centimeter pots, I noticed that some of them had actually managed to break through, break through the bag. So can you see there? So when I was potting them on, I got the scissors and I was cutting each one individually out of its bag. That one's dead. Um, and it was taking forever so i thought maybe maybe they've um tweaked the makeup of the bags and maybe they will do fine if if i just plop the plant in its bag into the soil so i thought right i've got so many army majors i can afford to do a little experiment here and just We'll compare later in the season how the ones that I've planted in their bags have done compared to the ones that weren't grown in bags and which I've potted on. So nice deep pots because any plant that grows very tall like that, Ami Major's sweet pea and that, they, they need a deep root run. So I must say they all look really healthy. These the Bascom Snowy Spires. Now with these, we have got a bit of green mould on the top um, there. So all you do is I will scrape that off, but I'm going to separate the two and pot them up individually into their own pots. I'm going to do that today. I definitely need to start potting these ones up you see that one is coming the roots coming out the bottom already um and get these fox gloves potted up as well and then what i'm thinking with the fox gloves because they are a woodland plant they like shade um i think they might be if i clear these shelves on the bottom i'll i might put the fox gloves right at the front of the shelf and they will get enough light there to grow on until I can free up some space in the cold frames for them. What I'm going to do now is I'll take you outside and I'll show you the Ami Majors that I put into my new cold frames. They've been in these cold frames for about two weeks now. Right, so this is one of my new cold frames that my husband made for me. I've got a nice little um, hasp and a lock on there to stop the wind from blowing it up. And I just, every morning I come out and I use this bungee cord to hook the lid up. Right, so this is the difference in the size of the plants between the ones in the greenhouse and the ones that went into this cold frame two weeks ago. Look at that. And as I've said in a previous video on Ami Majors, they are designed by nature to be a very tall, straggly seedling because they grow so tall so quickly. 
Um, I grow them every year. So if this was any other type of seeding, I would be a bit worried that they were getting too, too leggy. But that's absolutely fine. Lots of nice leaves there. So yeah, that's that cold frame. And every morning I just lift the lid up, regardless of whether it's raining. If it was really raining hard, I wouldn't open the cold frame, but a gentle rain, that's fine. Um, it's usually a lot windier than this in my garden and they're fine with that as well. They just, I can see them from my kitchen window. They just blow gently. And then this is my other cold frame at the back of the greenhouse. And I've just got locks on the um, little bolts, I should say, on the greenhouse. And I push them down into the lid. So yes, these are all doing fine. And you can see them getting nicely buffeted by the wind. And each little buffet will help the plant to strengthen its roots. Um, so this, for anybody who doesn't know, and I apologize to all you um, gardeners out there who do know, this is what we refer to as hardening off. So yes, um, every night without fail, I come out, I put the lid down, and then that cold frame is a good few degrees warmer than outside air. And um, I'll tell you what we'll do, which will be quite interesting. I'll take one of these plants and we'll compare it to um, the plants that haven't been hardened off yet in the greenhouse. Right, so um, I thought you might be interested to compare um, one of the amimages that has been kept in the cold frame for the last two weeks, the size of that to some of them that have been kept in the greenhouse. So these are the largest ones that have been kept in the greenhouse. The size isn't that much different, um, but I know that because this one has been hardened off for at least two weeks, that its root ball will be stronger and the stem of the actual plant will be stronger as well, um, as opposed to these ones are very cosseted. So if I was to put these ones out in the garden today and the wind picked up, it could flatten these ones. Um, whereas this one I would hope would be more resilient and stand up. Um, now, as I say, those ones are the biggest ones. The majority in the greenhouse are this size. Now, when you compare it to that, you can see it's probably 50% bigger than the majority of the other amimages in the greenhouse. And then obviously we have the little ones which were traumatized. Um, so that is the difference there. They've all sprung back to life. They're gonna be lovely, healthy little plants um, and they will catch up. One other thing I noticed um, were these little, um, lupins so um, these ones have been kept in their little modules and you compare the size of those ones to the ones that have been put into the bigger pots now actually with the lupins is that soil level the same a little bit bigger these ones but i only did pop these up last week but already they've put on i don't know would you say that's 50 percent extra growth so it does make a difference one thing you have to be very aware of is a plant this size in a tiny little module, the roots will have taken up virtually all the, the space in the soil in this little module. So if you get a warm day in the greenhouse or on your kitchen windowsill, um, the compost will dry out much quicker than if this one was sitting on your windowsill. So you have to be um, really observant when they're in their little modules um, to keep them well watered and healthy. So for the next couple of hours, I'm going to be putting on these antirrhinums. Um, you see, I would say they, they are definitely getting too big for those tiny modules. 
and I'll also put up those fox gloves as well and I'll be trying not to panic about where I'm going to put all these plants but um, there's always room, room for everyone <laughs> so thanks again for watching and I'll keep you updated and see you next time bye mm -hmm.